Hi, my name is Penelope Anstrother. I'm a recent graduate from SFAI and I majored in printmaking. Um, I do a lot of writing, so I'm drawn to the pacing in books. And another thing that I'm interested in is opposing and paradoxical thought, uh, which ends up being relate, like, relayed in juxtaposing images or trying to get a material to do the opposite of what it usually does. Okay, <laughs> um, so I thought I'd start with the first, the first book I'd start with would be the, my final in my book arts class and it's called Behind and in Front, The Water, the Drought and Other Withered Stumps of Time. It's milk painted on canvas with letterpress. So it's a conversation or collaboration with T.S. Eliot. Um, it's a, in conversation with the wasteland, so the book goes back and forth between lines. So I write a line and then it's answered by a direct quote in the wasteland that's shown with the brackets. Um, I was, because I was in my final semester, I was thinking about like looking forwards and backwards simultaneously and thinking about my time in school, what I was going to do afterwards. I wanted to make a, talk, a book talking about experiences across time. So this is what happened. This is the first book I finished after school, so it utilizes a lot of the same things. So it's milk painted canvas with letterpress, and it's called and pressed into. Um, so I was getting adjusted to life without classes and thinking about the impermanence of experience, and I wrote something paralleling humans wish to like leave some sort of impression um, and paralleling that to like the impression that the letterpress makes so I'm thinking about like the pressure of the van der Kirk and the imprint of your fingers um, this book while you calcify I oxidize it's milk paint on felt with hand stitching <coughs> stitching with bones teeth and metal. Um, it's a book about trying to get on with someone in a different mental state from yourself. So the pig's teeth are like stubbornness and the hand stitching is like softness. The felt is like a comforting blanket juxtaposed with like a hardness. Um, the, calcify the title Calcifying and Oxidizing, it's about like changing state slowly. Um, yeah, there's another picture. So the last book I'm going to talk about is called, but not the ones that I had, Foibles. Uh, it's hand stitching on painted cloth with metal and it's a scroll book. And one of the artists that I work for, she gave me this metal piece and she'd got it from the shipyards like maybe 20 years ago and just hoarded it like for a really long time and then she just gave it to me. She was like, oh, you'll like this. And so it felt like some kind of like relic, um, something kind of magical. And it also reminded me of me because that's totally something I would do. So <laughs> I wrote something about hoarding, like physical and emotional hoarding. So I thought I'd just end the presentation by reading it. And it says, you like the ghosts that haunted you, but not the ones that I had. <laughs> My name's Chao Ju Li. I'm from Taiwan. My major is jewelry, metal art for my master's degree at the Academy of Art University. I have been making art books since last year. I like to use new technique and the traditional way to make my book. Before I start my presentation, I want to say jewelry is not just about beauty. It should be meaningful. Today I'm going to introduce my recent book, Migration, Syrian Refugee. This is my book. I use cardboard with a uh, laser cutting machine to make this book. It is a wearable book. Uh, if you read this book from left to right side, you will know the story. Syrian war has been for four years. And uh, it is not only affect Syrian people, it also affects the whole world. If you see, the first part is a map of Syria and uh, Europe. 
And the last second one is a tank in front of the Syrian famous landmark. It is a temple. And then the third one is a boat on the top of the waves. And then the last one is a group of people walk in front of fans. This is my friend Sandra who wears this necklace. My inspiration are from these four images. So you can see the first one, the red line means um, how Syrian people escape from Syria to Europe. Syrian people usually take the boat and the world life best to escape to New Europe. But unfortunately, the life vest are fake. The material is paper. So when they fell in the ocean, the life vest can't save them. And uh, even though they can, even though they survive from this, after they arrive in Europe, there are a lot of difficulties they need to face. First of all, it is a million of Syrian refugees come to go to Europe every day. So the European government can support all of them. Second, it will reduce uh, the job, uh, reduce job opportunity to local people. And uh, also European will worry about maybe one of them are terrorists. As a result, even if they can live even they can live in Europe, uh, they might not have better life. And then now I want to talk about my chain. As you can see, I use bird fig. I use the bird as part of my design for this book. Uh, the reason because the bird give people the feeling of freedom, and also birds are gregarious animal. So you always can see birds are a group. The picture uh, here show you left to right, and uh, the bird become a feather. Uh, it also represent a group of refugees that escaping from Europe, but only few of them can survive. Uh, when I search all this information, I'm thinking, what can we do for them? I'm a student, so I can't be a volunteer to, to, to go to there to help them. Uh, and uh, I, I don't have enough money to do the donate, so I want to use my skill to jewelry making to make this book, and uh, I would like to spread this information and uh, let people know what kind of situation they are faced. Thank you. Hi, I'm Selena. Um, and I'm going to talk about a project that's over there, the pedestal book, which started when my collaborator, Aaron Peters, and I challenged each other to make an artwork inspired by every single Seinfeld episode. <laughs> um, so we decided to start with season five, episode 21, <laughs> where Kramer publishes his coffee table book through Pendant Publishing. A coffee table book about coffee tables that turns into a coffee table. This project took eight seconds to conceive and eight months to produce. So, <laughs> so we um, recontextualized Kramer's idea to fit our art student lifestyles and made a pedestal book about pedestals that is a pedestal. And this is how it turned out. We were intrigued with the idea because similar to coffee tables, a pedestal is meant to offer support while remaining physically or conceptually invisible. So Aaron photographed all the easily accessible pedestals between our two institutions, Mills College and UCLA, and I began to build models. This is my first model, um, the Coptic stitch I thought um, the exposed binding would be visually intriguing 
and I wouldn't have to worry about casing anything in like um, the ger- like the German case binding, which is like your standard book. Um, but the Coptic stitch uh, in such a large scale would end up being way too flimsy, so I kind of had to ditch that idea and do research on the dosa do structure, which kind of seems to even itself out. Um, I found an exciting example of a five-fold dosa do binding from 1736, and I figured, yeah, like if each book has five books in it, and I may I have enough paper to make an edition of five, then like that sounds like a lot. It should stack up pretty high. I was like stoked. So. <laughs> Um, so I kept prototyping the five-fold dosa do, um, and started to scale up, first testing a long stitch, and then realizing that after all, the German case binding would be the best because of its low profile and durable structure. So I began to sew, and sew, <laughs> and prototype. This is the full s- first full-scale prototype, um, which was really exciting at first. Um, but of course, <laughs> it had some problems. For example, uh, I forgot to cut the middle boards shorter, so the spines hang over the edge just by a little bit. Um, and of course, we spelled the word pedestal wrong in the colophon. <laughs> So I started over, um, <laughs> but there was something really, <laughs> there was something really satisfying about ripping all my hard work into shreds and sewing for days and days. So this time I measured correctly, but um, I needed to find a way to bulk up my book blocks, which were sagging in every book because of how dense and glossy the paper is. Um, so I made cushions uh, that kind of slipped in the middle of every book so the pressure is distributed evenly when underweight. And I had to make smaller ones in the final piece, which actually worked out fine, except it didn't stack up high enough. So <laughs> I had to make a mini pedestal for the pedestal book. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, it's, this is in my senior thesis show at, Mills Co- at the Mills College Art Museum, which is open till April 17th. So if you want to go see it and my other installation, you can. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Liz. I go to the Academy of Art University. Um, so I'm going to talk about my subject matter for kind of my work in general, but also specifically the accordion books I was doing for a long time. Um, I, as an artist and as a person, I really, I want to be able to pay attention to the outer world and also kind of like what, how it affects inside of me, like my thoughts and my beliefs. I think. It's a very, um, it's a very strong interaction that goes on all the time, and I want to use my art and the process of making things to explore that and kind of like discover new ways of looking at things or answers or even more questions. I think all of that is very important to me. Specifically for these accordion books, they I was looking at my grandmother who had dementia and just seeing her decline and like physically declining and then her just mind was like she was forgetting so many things and that was just really scary to me how your like personality and thoughts can just go away um and i just like trying to find like who you are as a person is not necessarily as stable so i i used etching and letterpress printing for the text for these and that's what i i like to do a lot um i like to use letterpress for the text it's very like precise and refined and then the etching can be very raw and immediate kind of like echoing like thoughts and how you think really fast or like you can uncontrollably and the 
books themselves, I often go to the accordion book. It's a nice, very simple structure. Um, but it also, I like that it pans out and it, you can also read it page by page. So as a child, I wanted to be a writer and I still write a little bit of poetry and things. And I like to use that in books. I think that is a good draw for me. I like, so I like the meaning of words and I like the lack of meaning in words. And also words can be used as a visual textural element as well. Just the way they sit on a page and are the arrangement of letters. I think that's a very beautiful thing. <laughs> Hello. Okay. My name is Nora McKinnon. I'm a second year in the MFA Book Art and Creative Writing program at Mills. I am going to present three books tonight that have led me towards my current thesis project. Basically, I'm interested in hyperreality, which is an inability of consciousness to distinguish reality from a simulation of reality, especially in technologically advanced societies, such as ours. So I'm interested in exploring how imperialism and capitalism are self-perpetuating mechanisms, like what drives these, specifically how does the projected hyper-reality of California, where I and probably most of you live, um, how does it perpetuate its own sort of mythos as a golden coast, land of both leisure and opportunity? I was drawing on such authors as Debord, Baudrillard, and Barthes in the formation of this project, but eventually I had to stop reading books and start making books. So here we go. Glass City, Brick City. This book was created from images of downtown Oakland that I photographed over about four weeks, then printed and collaged digitally and assembled into the accordion book structure. One side contains the glass city, shiny skyscrapers and reflective walls. The other is the Brick City. Warehouses, peeling paint, buildings that haven't yet been remodeled, but actually I know that a couple of these have been remodeled since I've taken pictures last year. Um, so I want to note that some of the only digital editing I did of these images was to resize and cut and paste. No filters or adjustments to exposure or color. It might seem antithetical to a project exploring hyperreality to need to note the like authenticity of these images, but what's important to me about this project is a foundational piece for my thesis work is that it sort of highlights the um the like irrelevance of any distinction between natural and artificial. So it was one of the like grounding like starts of my fascination with the hyper real. The next book is called Dazzling and here I moved from the landscape back into the body and explored the body under the constant gaze of state surveillance. The phrase dazzle camouflage which the title is referring to, comes from a technique developed for World War I in which a ship that needed to be camouflaged was painted black and white with sharp geometric patterns, and this disrupts uh, observer's ability for like depth perception. Um, so this concept is applied to makeup designs, and faces are obscured with geometric patterns, your shadows and highlights are reversed, and key features such as the bridge of the nose are disrupted. So I took those dazzle disruption makeup designs and flattened them into geometric shapes which I could cut out of the faces that I printed in my book. This book, by the way, was letterpress printed using a four color separation technique known as process printing and from polymer plates. The structure is a variation on the storage book structure by Heidi Kyle. This book is about movement to me and the constant tension between desiring to be seen and desiring to obscure oneself from constant surveillance. My next project, entitled An Introduction to the Hyperpalm, is where I start to more firmly articulate my ideas around the hyperreal and California. It's a digitally printed single pamphlet with a tinted vinyl cover and a pop-up centerfold, which is that. This book functions as a guide, basically, instructing the reader in the history and origins of the hyperpalm in California. I chose to focus on two of the most common species of non-native palms, the Mexican fan palm and the Canary Island date palm. These two specific palm trees were imported and planted by Spanish missionaries and other colonizing agents to reshape and redetermine the Californian landscape as a paradise for the invasive populations from European nations. 
So my book seeks to introduce the reader to an abbreviated history of these palm trees and provoke a deeper questioning of how locations are shaped by the forces that seek power and control over them. In the next six months, I'll be continuing this work, exploring hyperreality and symbols of the hyperreal in California in preparation for my thesis exhibition, to which everyone is invited to in November of 2016 <laughs> in Oakland. And thank you very much to the book club for having me. Hi, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Carlos Rodriguez. Thanks for having me so much. Let's jump right in. Um, this is the first book I ever made. It was called uh, Kid Neptune. I made it uh, studying abroad in Osaka, and um, it was all plate lithography. I made it in Japan uh, studying at this school where there were literally... Uh, did some taxidermy and uh, he ended up <laughs> <laughs> ended up dead as well. Um, so um, later uh, I turned away from the comic uh, direction and made more, uh, I do some writing sometimes, some poetry in my notebook so I started just uh, putting those into books and I got a lot into hand lettering while I was in Japan so I utilized that and my illustration to make books like these where just like a little poem from my notebook and uh, I would illustrate them and uh, this one's a board book, Little Love Letter to San Francisco and <laughs> so that was more in that direction and then um, that's the city smell, let's see the this one was uh, Heart Attack Boy which was the first time in bookmaking where I actually decided uh, to try and uh, kind of unify like the book structure with the narrative structure. So this is the do -si do structure. You can see like uh, it just keeps flipping around if you keep turning the pages. So I made this little character heart attack boy where he, uh, he just uh, gets high and comes down and uh, <laughs> it's just kind of cycles of addiction, you know. So there's a uh, it just kind of keeps flipping around and this was all it was a lot of fun to do because I was just sketching and drawing directly into the book and um, writing it as I went as well but uh, it came out for the best so <laughs> whatever and then uh, <laughs> this is uh, Puddles of You another um, poem that I had written and made into a letterpress book with a trifold and uh, all the illustrations were lino cuts. And so at this time I was reading a lot of Sun Ra poetry. And so he has this, uh, this poem called this, this Planet is Doomed. And it has this very kind of frantic, repetitive structure that um, I kind of stole here and used for my own purposes. And so there's, uh, yeah, I, I did that. And then. <laughs> Uh, that's all the books I brought. That was really fast. Uh, so <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much for having me. There's my website, Carlos, <laughs> carlosloveyou.com. You guys should take a look. Thank you. Hello, my name's Malaya. I'm currently an undergraduate student in California College of the Arts, um, studying printmaking. <laughs> And I just wanted to thank my teachers and Shruti for like having me. It's been great, and like seeing all the work that other students are making is really important. So it's been really fun and cool. So thank you. Um, this is just like an example of more of my print work. Um, they're like larger scale and work more with the figure and fabric. And for me, it's something that's really important 
to sort of understand what the figure and just yourself is. Um, so a lot of it deals with what it means to be a woman. Um, and then, so I'm just going to talk about my book work, which is sort of a different path from a lot of my main work because it offered such a different realm. And I kind of like to look at the book as like a figure itself, as a body that's moving and like you get to explore it. But like a lot of people look at them and they're precious and they respect them. So it's kind of like playing with like consent and yeah, stuff. So I thought that was interesting. Um, but this book is called Collide. It's one of my like only real f- kind of like formal edition books. Um, and this one dealt with, um, I used figures, yeah, to represent different conflicts within yourself. Uh, so it sort of brings them into being and um, displays them in a space where they have to collide and coexist. And I think that was really hard for me to deal with because it was talking a lot of personal issues. And then it has like a little poem that talks about it more directly and then this one is called restless wonder which is a book and it's edition of three which was like really difficult and interesting to make an edition of something that i felt was like particular especially with boxes um so this is like how it opens up and i kind of thought of the different like when i was a child i used to like exploring and finding little boxes and finding little things within them so i wanted to sort of make something for that part of my life and for anyone who's still like that um and so it's got it's kind of creepy um it's a th- <laughs> sorry about that it's a three layer uh, lithograph print and i was kind of wondering what it meant to sort of in like in house a little handmade ecosystem and then also this book talks about sort of us decomposing and being recreated into the earth. And it was interesting how when I was focusing on boxes, I instantly went into this weird like metaphysical stage where I was thinking about where we all came from and like, what's up with this? When am we going to die? What's going to happen? I don't know why I went there, but I did. <laughs> so I just sort of went with it. Um, and that was the, this is the next book, which was a large final project for my book works class. And this one's called Seen and Unseen. And the concept of this was however much you wanted to explore the book and take it apart, it really challenged the audience to do that. And I feel like for me, I always just step away from books that make me do that. So it was trying to get the audience more involved. So it's called Seen and Unseen because the little things on the left, you can take them out and they're the more easily seen. And then you have to physically take out the little body and her parallel universe, which is that supposed to represent, or their parallel universe, and then go into the unseen, which is that little, if you want to do a little, like, gif. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the, they all come out in their little books, so they represent um, the unseen aspects of what is seen, if that makes sense. And they all have um, poems within them, too. And it's a little close-up of another figure representing sort of a like our relationship with the world and for me metaphysical I'm not really that religious I don't know if that's religious but um it's just nice to have that space to let yourself go into a realm where maybe you don't have to have control over anything and just like let that exist with you so yeah it's the end of that thank you <laughs> have another round of applause for all of our student artists and wonderful. So I just wanted to mention that we did have one a sudden sickness of a student who couldn't make it tonight um, but her work we have a link to her work on the website so if you guys want to check out her work it's really beautiful her name is Sequoia. Thank you guys again so much for coming it was a wonderful event.